A few weeks ago, I purchased a DFI K6 PV3 Plus 66 SuperSocket 7 motherboard off eBay. It was a moment of joy once I held this motherboard in my hands. In previous videos, I was limited to the standard Socket 7 platform, which does not unlock the full potential of AMD's K62 family of processors. So it was about time to get a Super Socket 7 motherboard. Unfortunately, my excitement was tarnished once I pulled the pre-installed CPU out of the socket. It had a bent pin. Okay, no issue. It is possible to straighten the pin and all will be good. Or so I thought. After straightening the pin and returning the CPU back into the socket, the pin got bent again. It seems like the socket is to blame for bending the pin when the lever is closed and the CPU is pushed into the locked position. I examined the socket where the affected CPU pin would be inserted. I think you can see that the problematic pinhole looks different than the rest. It also looks like the plastic cover was under some sort of stress. Maybe someone before tried to insert a different CPU with a bent pin that caused this damage. In today's video I will try to remove the lid of the socket and have a look what's hiding underneath. I'm hoping that I will be able to fix whatever is causing the CPU pin to bend. And although I do not have the proper tools or skills to desolder a socket of that size, I have two replacement sockets. Just in case. I really hope we don't have to go there. But first, let's have a look at a few features of the Super Socket 7 board. The Super Socket 7 platform offers many advantages over the older Socket 7 platform like SDRAM support, higher external bus frequencies and an AGP interface. The DFI board also supports a wide range of CPUs from Pentium 100 up to the K62 Plus and the K63 models. The maximum memory capacity of the board is 768 MB, which by the way could lead to non-cacheable memory areas. The model I have here comes with 1 MB of level 2 cache. This DFI board also supports hard disks with an ATA66 interface and bus mastering to reduce CPU utilization during data transfers. We also get a wide range of supported CPU voltages. Low voltages from 1.3 up to 2.05 volts can be adjusted in 0.05 volt steps. Higher voltages from 2 to 3.5 volts can be adjusted in 0.1 volt steps. The external bus frequency ranges from 66 to 100 MHz. The board supports CPU multipliers from 1.5 up to 5.5. One last thing to note is that the memory speed can be derived either by the AGP or by the CPU external clock. The AGP clock never exceeds 66 MHz, regardless of the external clock frequency. When the memory is configured to use the CPU external clock, we can use up to 100 MHz memory modules, which should improve the overall performance of the system. I have a few K62 Plus CPUs rated at 570 MHz which were meant to run at an external frequency of 95 MHz, but I am sure they will work with 100 MHz as well. We will test this later in the video, in case my repair attempt will be successful. Ok, now it is time to have a look at this broken socket. Those plastic sockets are over 20 years old, and this is the first time I am removing the plastic lid from one of them. The combination of my lack of experience and material fatigue sounds like the perfect recipe to break stuff. So let's get started. I have seen a video of a newer socket model where you first had to pull out the lever from the side. Since I did not know any better, I tried just that. In hindsight, you would just have to loosen the clips accessible through those openings. You need a flat and rigid tool to get in there and the lid off the socket. My method of removing the lever also somehow worked, but that may just have been a lucky coincidence. One clip of the socket got loose and only three remained locked. I used a plastic prying tool, but I was still worried to break one of those thin plastic edges. After getting nowhere for some time, I thought it is a good idea to lift the lid from one of the sides of the socket. Mm. 
There goes a surface mounted capacitor. Luckily it flew directly into my hand and it was not lost. Probably not the best place, but hey, if you enjoyed this video so far, consider giving it the thumbs up. Anyway, looks like things have to first get worse before they get any better. After a lot of back and forth, I was finally able to remove the lid from the socket. And here we can see something odd in the corner. The metal plate inside the socket seems to be bent. When the pin of the CPU slides forward, it gets stuck at the metal and bends. Before I attempt to straighten the metal plate, I want to refix the capacitor that snapped off the board while I was trying to remove the plastic lid of the socket. Okay, that job is done well enough. Now we can move on with the socket itself. I chose two thin needles for this work. They worked perfectly to realign the inside of the pinhole and also provided support to reshape the metal. In the end, I almost couldn't spot that there was an issue before. That worked really well and much better than I could have imagined. Great! Time to reassemble the socket. With everything reassembled, we have to make sure that the socket will no longer bend this one pin on the CPU. The CPU falls into the socket without resistance. That is really good. Now let's close the socket and see if the repair was a success. I can easily remove the CPU from the socket. That wasn't the case when the pin was bent. And look at that! We no longer have a bent pin! Great, and what a relief that I don't have to attempt to replace the entire socket. But now we still have to test if this motherboard works. Let's configure the board for the AMD K62 Plus 570 overclocked to 600 MHz and see if the board posts. I am very happy with the outcome of this project. I finally have a SuperSocket 7 motherboard that we can use for a lot of tests in the future. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do with this board in upcoming videos. If you're still watching and don't want to miss any of my future videos, consider subscribing to my channel. And if you press the dislike button when I chip that capacitor off the board, now is your chance to reconsider. 
Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in one of my other videos.